Hey there guys and welcome back to PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. You voted for the third character and the winner is Cole McGrath, star of Infamous and Infamous 2. So let's do this. This whole city is falling apart. Ravaged by fear, plagued by looters and gangs. It's tearing itself apart at the seams. With all my powers, I can't hold it together myself. I need help. The kind only people like me can provide. I've heard of some sort of activity, a gathering of a special group of people. Conduits? Good? Bad? I won't know until I find them, but I know I have to find them. I have to do what I can to bring them back with me, to help me save this city. Now there might be some spoilers for the Infamous 2 LP that's going on right now in this particular episode, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest you do not watch this right now. Watch it later. Anyway, first up against Hihachi, Toro and Jack and Daxter. Should be a pretty easy fight because Toro and Jack are both among the worst characters in the game and Hihachi is not particularly good either. Ah, crap. Not this stage. Uh, crap, this was one of the timed matches. Crap, this stage, you really only want to fight on this stage and kill matches because then you can just end it really quickly in the cramped up first part. But no, we have to sit this one out. Oh, goody. Anyway, Cole is, I would say, one of the better characters in the game. Probably high tier, at least. I personally prefer Evil Cole by a long shot, but regular Cole is... Decent, I suppose. Doesn't hold a candle to the evil one, but he can still hold his own. He's got his amp combos, pretty much ripped straight out of Infamous 2. And pick up a fish, slap some people in the face with it, because that is probably a horrible, horrible insult. Just slap someone in the face with a fish. Alright, come on, get up. Toro is just wrecking Jack over there, and I'm duking it up with Hihachi. He's got his sticky grenades from Infamous 2. And let's see, he can do the electric slide thing, which in the infamous games he can only do on like uh, power lines or train tracks, but for the sake of convenience he can do it pretty much on anything in this game. Also, he has ice powers. Yes, spoilers for infamous 2, Cole gets ice powers eventually if you choose to be the good guy. And time to let that rip with the level 3, which is the tornado move. And it's a good thing they buffed this move in a later patch, because originally this move was garbage. The tornado moved so slow, you could barely get any kills with it on the bigger stages. But they amped up the speed because they realized that the level 3 sucked, and now it's pretty damn good. Hell, you'd have to be doing something horribly wrong not to get at least 4 or 5 kills with it. Anyway... Uh, fighting on the Uncharted 3 stage, anyone who's played Uncharted 3 will remember this memorable sequence. And it is invaded by... Bioshock Infinite, I believe. I have not played Bioshock Infinite, so I would not have a clue what that flying thing is, or what's up with the blimp in the background. Uh, Prince Boo 21 recently did a Bioshock Infinite LP, so you might want to take a look at that one. Anyway, I had you go over there. He's got his uh, throw move, which is based off of one of his finishers, and level 2, which is based on, one, I think, the Ionic Freeze from Infamous 2. Basically, as soon as Cole gets the ice powers, he can uh, use those purple things he picks up off of dead people, not just to conjure up the tornado, but also these really big ice spikes all over the place, which is basically the same as the tornado, but just with the ice powers. Very useful for clearing out large sections of enemies. Anyway, pick up Spirit Destiny, that'd be one hell of an awesome weapon to use in the infamous games. But no, we're stuck with the lame-ass amp thing. Oh well. Still haven't showed off his level 1. Uh, we only have short amount of time remaining, so that might have to wait until the next match. Either that, or, oh, nope, nope, I got Toro with it. Level 1 is the Kinetic Pulse, which used to pick up cars and stuff in Infamous 2. And then he just tosses someone, gets a kill with it, and if you are really lucky, you can pretty much throw the opponent into another opponent, getting another kill. 
Or maybe even get a triple kill if you're insanely lucky. I don't remember if that ever happened to me. But I wouldn't say it's impossible. Okay, kill matches now. Versus Ratchet, Sir Daniel and Sackboy. Oh boy. Why does Sackboy look so weird? Skeleton costume. It's kind of creepy. He's like, it's like he's trying... He's really cute, but he's trying to be really creepy. Also, the zipper over the ribcage kind of kills it. Anyway... I don't know what that Ratchet outfit is from. I think he wears a different outfit in like every game. So it's probably from one Ratchet and Clank game or another. Oh yeah, and that robot, I completely forgot about that. He also ha Ratchet also has this smack-talking robot sidekick that's not Clank. And he's also a move in this game, but he's absolutely garbage. Pretty much, you conjure the robot up, he kind of starts shooting at people. He never really leaves Ratchet's, it's Ratchet's side, though. So, he's just kind of hovering around you. His shots do not gain you a lot of points, and they don't even flinch enemies, and there we go, kill number one. So, yeah, that's why you did not see that robot in the previous episode, because it's horrible and I didn't feel like using it. Anyway... Oh, this gun, I thought it was the Starhawk sniper, but no, this is some sort of weird rocket launcher thing. Which... I don't think it's from Starhawk. I don't recognize it at least, so it could be from, I don't know, Resistance or Kill Zone. Or maybe Ratchet and Clank even, though it it doesn't look cartoony enough to be from Ratchet and Clank. Most of the guns from Ratchet and Clank look insanely cartoony. Anyway, just tossing grenades and everything. He's also got his ice grenades, which Oh, nice. That's how you get a double kill with that move. Ah, nice. Oh, Sir Daniel is pissed. Look at Cole's shit-eating grin. Holy shit, Cole. You could not be more cocky if you tried. Oh, crap. Kratos, Nariko, and Sweet Tooth. This might be a problem. Especially because Kratos is the most difficult AI out of all of them. Uh, green AI is, I think, level 2 out of 5. Blue is level 3 out of 5. So, I should definitely be watching out for Kratos in this one. Also, Sweet Tooth is wearing a tuxedo now. Does that make him even scarier? Hmm. I don't know. I'd say his regular costume is perhaps a little bit scarier, but the Starhawk Sweet Tooth is probably the scariest out of all of them. Also, Black Kratos. From that uh, completely unnecessary scene at the end of God of War 3, which I thought killed all momentum the game had at that point. Such a waste. But we'll get to that when I get the God of War 3 LP going again. No anyway, wait, oh damn it. I was comboing Kratos and Noriko yanks me out of there. Okay, conjure up some ice. And he can also conjure up this big ice pillar underneath him that launches him into the sky, which is also straight out of Infamous 2. Which uh, is one of his transport abilities. It doesn't have any use in combat whatsoever, but you can use it to like hop on top of a rooftop real quick. Pretty convenient. In this game, it's about as useless in combat as it is in Infamous 2. So, at least they brought it over faithfully. Anyway, Spear of Destiny. They really don't seem to have a lot of different items in this game, don't, do they? How many times have I used this thing already? And what do we have there? Anyway, Ionic Freeze, and crap, I missed Kratos. Damn it, Kratos. Oh well, still winning. Sweet Tooth also got one kill while I wasn't paying attention. Oh, is that a triple? Ah, oh, no, it's not a triple. Damn it, I really thought I had a triple kill there. Would have been awesome, but no, I only got Sweet Tooth and Kratos with it. Oh, well. Look at that grin. He's so happy he won. He's really rubbing it in your faces. Anyway, who could Cole's rival be? Is it perhaps Evil Cole? I guess we're about to find out. something I can help you with? What are you doing here? I'm just looking for certain people. And if they don't want to be found? No, I'm afraid it's too late for that. We're all going to be involved in this sooner or later. Not me. Leave me out of it. You're either going to help me, or I'm going to stop you. Here. 
Nope, Cole's rival is Raiden. Honestly, evil Cole being Cole's rival would not make a lot of sense because then he'd be talking to and fighting to himself. Which would be kind of weird. But yeah, Raiden is Cole's rival. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, apparently because they have some sort of lightning theme going on. Because Cole has electric powers and Raiden... Well, he was also kind of sparking with lightning all the time and his name is like Japanese for lightning or something. So I guess that's where they're going with it. Anyway, this might be a pretty tough fight because Raiden is one of the best characters in the game and... The AI is pretty tough, and it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, so his full attention is going to be focused on me. But I'm off to an early lead. That's one thing the Ice Launch is good for, comboing into the Thunder Drop, which is also straight out of the Infamous games. So they definitely did recreate Cold's moveset pretty faithfully. And crap, I'm being comboed in the corner, that is never a good thing. Get off me, Raiden. He's also got that little interesting thing, the Redirect Rocket. For some reason, he always shoots it straight up, which is probably not how you're going to be using it in Infamous 1 and 2. Actually, is it even in Infamous 1? I haven't played Infamous 1 in so long that I don't remember. Anyway, that was uh, kind of overkill there, but whatever, it worked. So how does the redirect rocket work? You shoot it up into the air and then you use the regular lightning bolts to kind of direct where the hell you want it to go. And then it just launches there and blows up and... It's, it takes some time to get used to it, but once you do, it's pretty useful. You're right, and have some ice. Chill. Come on, combo, and crap, that thing went nowhere. Come on, just hold still already. Doesn't help that he's insanely fast. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's one hell of a combo. Raiden is definitely one of the most combo-heavy characters in the game. Although, if, even if you don't know any flashy combos, you can still use them just fine, because all of his moves are pretty good. He's insanely fast, his range is... It's, it's not nearly as good as Kratos's, but that makes sense. Because he only has that sword. It's not the longest sword ever. Ah, oh, crap, he moved. So if you see, like, a really good Cole player can do all sorts of insane shit with the redirect rocket and stuff. I'm not really that good with regular Cole. If I even use one of the infamous characters, it's usually Evil Cole, because I think he's a lot better. But I think I st I'm, st I'm decent with almost every character on the roster. Except for Sly, Parappa. Those are really uh, Toro, but no one is good with Toro, because Toro sucks so much. Oh well. Damn it, Raiden. Now, he's not really capitalizing on that backflip kick thing, though. I know he has a move that follows that up perfectly, and crap, he dodged it. Perhaps I should just stick to the more reliable level 1 combo that I have. Because Cole's regular amp combo, the pretty much his regular square combo, has, I think, three different outcomes that are pretty much randomly decided, and one of them sends the opponent into that little crumple state there, or they go onto their knees. That is perfect for catching them with the level 1 if your timing is right. However, because you don't always know that you're gonna get that end of the combo string, you're gonna have to react really quickly if you see that you have that move. Like, now. Level 1, and bam, dead. Then that's pretty damn hard to avoid. Well, of course, if you're blocking, you can probably avoid that pretty easily, but... Also, Cole can hang on walls, because that's what he does in the Infamous games. Hangs on buildings. He doesn't really have a lot of options when he's doing that, pretty much all he can do is shoot the bolts, which are absolutely terrible. You'd think in Infamous... in the Infamous games they have some sort of stopping power to them, but in this game they absolutely do not. I can shoot him... oh... crap. I thought the hitbox on that would have been gone by now. Oh well, still winning, don't care. Jeez, this rival fight is going on forever. I guess we're really evenly matched. Alright, stun him, and redirect rockets, that's some fancy stuff. Ooh, and he dives right into it. Silly Raiden, you don't do that. And let's see if he dodges it again. No, he does not. Well, that was a good fight, I'd say. Also, that creepy Zeke minion. Oh, jeez. I can't believe I haven't commented on that earlier, but that looks so weird. All the minions kind of creep me out with their big, unblinking eyes. Reminds me of freaking Esper from Pokemon X and Y. That thing haunts me in my dreams. Anyway, time for Polygon Man. 
And Ninja Skittles 27 is now offline. I'm not sure why you needed to know that. I just mentioned it because it popped up and there's nothing else to talk about because it's a bloody loading screen. Alright, let's go. He conjures himself up out of the stage. And I can't believe I haven't commented on this yet either, but he kind of looks like Ganondorf to me. Does anyone else uh, see that similarity? Also, yay, Sweet Tooth. I guess Sweet Tooth is not the worst opponent you could get in this scenario. So I'm pretty sure Cole can easily run circles around him. Alright, Thunder Drop, combo, and level 1, and dead. That's how you deal with Sweet Tooth. Oh, jeez. Okay, Polygon Man, if you want to get your ass whooped, then fine. Hit him a couple times, and he'll go into the background where he belongs. Oh boy, Noriko and Drake. Crap. That might be a pretty tricky combination. Noriko being a pretty good close-range character and Drake being a decent long-range character. Kind of complement each other. Not perfectly. Because Drake's also... Oh jeez, the minigun. Of course, Noriko is blocking my attacks and Drake's just shooting from behind her. That's going to be tricky to get around. Oh crap. Freaking grenade thing. Now I can't use my supers and I can't progress if I can't use my supers. Ooh, I don't know what this is. Two things that orbit me and shoot lasers. They look kind of ratchet and clankish. So I'm guessing that's where they come from. Ice spikes, nice. Double kill. Alright. Now around... Oh, at first this guy and then they all come back for another go. Come on. Pew, 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 pew. Shoot him a little. Jeez, take so many hits to kill him with the bolts because they are so weak in this game. Can I throw that Sackboy robot thing on there? That is probably one of the, the handiest items in the game because it kind of hugs the opponents, slowing them down, weighing them down, they can't jump as high, and it's steadily pretty much decreasing their meter while it's hugging them. Look, he loves Sweet Tooth. No one loves Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth is a murdering psychopath. He had loved ones at some point, but I'm pretty sure he killed them all and ate them or something. I wouldn't put it past him, at least. Alright, knock him down. Hmm. I might as well just go for a level 3 at this point. That's probably the most reliable option I have. Is the level 2... They might avoid it. Also, that thing in the background. Someone... People have been telling me that it's from Little Big Planet. I guess I can kind of see that. I haven't played any of the Little Big Planet games, so... That's why I don't recognize it. Anyway... Swoop all of them up in the tornado. They're all dead. Still have to wait for the super to end, though. Okay, done. Alright. Oh, yeah, it also kind of gathers all the items up and scatters them around. Oh, crap. Forgot that thing was there. And he takes advantage of it to crush me. Alright, have some electricity. He doesn't seem to like it. Jeez, it really takes forever to kill him with those things. Anyway, Cole is now the official PlayStation Champion. Even though he's pretty much being replaced as protagonist for the next infamous game. Oh well, he's had a good run. And what is Cole going to do with all that PlayStation energy? Guess we're going to find out in the ending. Probably the same thing all the other characters do, the same thing they usually do, but just with more power. Alright, ending time. I don't know if those people were conduits or what. It's long past the time I could worry about who's on which side. I've got work to do. It's time to end this, once and for all. Time to show everyone what I can do and why I'm doing it. I'm gonna save this city, or die trying. That's a short-ass ending. Also a rather unfortunate remark at the end. No spoilers. Anyway, don't forget to vote for next episode's character in the description. There's a link. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.